Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is uh, a continuation of my series of Adventurer Conqueror King System. Uh, I'll be focusing on Chapter 2, uh, which is on characters and character creation. But I want to, before I get to that lead in, with an announcement that I will be interviewing Alexander Macris on October 27th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so first time having him on my channel. Uh, I am, I am, as many of you have already noted in my previous video, I'm actually just getting to covering Axe uh, First Edition uh, just a couple of weeks before um, second edition's Kickstarter is going to launch. So, uh, as always, I, I, I try to keep up with these things, but, uh, you know, sometimes I just get backlogged and it's been a long time in the coming for me to get to, uh, Adventure Conqueror King. Um, but it is what it is and, uh, looking forward to covering as much of, the first edition before second edition launches into Kickstarter. But I have, I have a feeling that, um, you know, the Kickstarter will run like it normally does, you know, for a month long time. And then, uh, it will probably be, uh, whether it be weeks or months, you know, before the second edition is actually released. Uh, so, we'll have more than enough time to cover this. And then I'll be able to do a comparison between the two as well. So once again, I will be interviewing uh, Alexander Macris on October 27th at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be uh, advertising this interview as a live stream. It will be a live stream. Uh, so I will advertise that about a week out. So I'll wait until uh, this upcoming Friday before I uh, start advertising and putting the link out for the um, for the live stream interview. So, without further ado, let's start taking a look at Chapter Two characters. So here we go, and uh, I will expand this a little bit, and I'm going to skim through a lot of this because uh, this is. You know, very, very similar. If you are at all familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, then a lot of this is just going to be a refresher. All right, so uh, you're taking a first step on adventure, but you are still a zero-level human. Don't despair because you become first level when you create your first character and progress from there to create a character. Follow these nine steps. <coughs> so... First step is to start with a character sheet. Next step is to roll 3d6 in order for your character's ability score. So this is a very old school rolling uh, method of uh, rolling them in order, just 3d6. Next is uh, choosing your class and your abilities from the class character selection. All classes have prime requisites and some classes require minimum scores for some abilities. If abilities are not quite high enough for the class you would like to play, see class and ability scores for some options to adjust your scores. Uh, so it's not as hardcore as old D&D where if you didn't match up with um, the required uh, stat for a particular class you wanted to play, you didn't play that class, you played what class you could actually fit into. Uh, so this will give you some flexibility with that as well. Note on your character sheet that your character is has uh, zero experience points and XP, so really getting right back to the fundamentals. Rolling hit points using the appropriate die for your character. Adding your constitution bonus or penalty. And note the results as your hit points. Um... At your judge's discretion, you may begin with the maximum hit points for first level, which is 
so standardized as far as homebrews are concerned that, um, you know, quite frankly, I think it replaces the, uh, even the old school method of rolling, uh, rolling straight up for first, you know, first level. Um, I don't know. Well, I shouldn't say I don't know anybody that do, does that, but uh, it's less than 1% still do it that way um and i do not recommend that that's just my thing um to end up with a character with one hit point uh is virtually impossible for them to truly even attempt to adventure and so that's going to put the player in such a uh in such a position that they're really not going to look to engage very much and the adventure at all and it's really a waste of everybody's time so um it's just it's just one of the old school rules that was never a good idea to begin with all right so let's move on uh record your characters attack or throws and all such so really just talking about creating the character and filling out the character sheet here uh, character proficiencies from the proficiencies chapter, and I will do a separate video on proficiencies. And then you are going to generate your character's starting wealth, three uh, three d six times ten, uh, without uh, without a modifier for uh, character class, which usually you'll see in many uh, in many of the older D and D uh, systems, even in Castles and Crusades, it does that as well as others. Uh, here, it's just straight across the board. Uh, determining your AC is based on your armor class, or the armor you're wearing, uh, whether or not you're using a shield, and then your dex bonus, giving your character a name, and so on. So here is the ability score distribution. A3 will give you a minus 3, and 18 will give you a plus 3, and then a 9 to a 12 is considered to be exactly average. A 6 to an 8 is a minus 1, whereas 13 to a 15 is a plus 1, and so forth. So um, some classes will have a prime requisite, and that will modify uh, what classes that you're able to play. And... Um, you know, or where you want to put your your emphasis on as far as their attributes are concerned. Uh, so you have strength, intelligence. It's the very basics, right? Wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma. Uh, you do have an experience point adjustment uh, based on the attribute level or the uh, ability prime requisite. So... Um, Let's say a fighter has a prime requisite of a uh, strength, right? And so if the character has a strength uh, of a 13 to 15, the fighter will get plus 5% uh, experience adjustment, 16 to 18, 10%. Hit points and character classes. So let's just start taking a look at the character classes here. Um, very briefly, so you have the fighter, strength is the prime, requirements are none, uh, hit die is a d8, different than uh, advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, either first or second edition. Maximum level is 14, all right, so that's, uh, that's an interesting change from some of the others. We will then continue on. Uh, here we have a um, here we have a template, so a mercenary, t mercenary template, proficiencies would be combat reflexes and manual of arms, starting equipment, so they would start with this equipment plus the role of their, uh, of their, uh, starting gold, so that 3d6 times 10, and then here are the experience point progression, uh, you have a damage bonus that goes up with uh, with the levels, up to a maximum of uh, a plus five, which act actually begins. Sorry, <laughs> the yawn came out of nowhere. Which actually begins around um, uh, level twelve. 
fighter attack and saving throws. And so you have their saving throws that are um, that are added here. And the attack say uh, the attack throw or saving throw is here as well. Uh, here you have a mage, intelligence being the prime requisite. Uh, D4 hit die, maximum level 14, and so forth. So you will have your spells um, that begin at level 2. And um, I'm sorry, spells begin at level 1 um, or even level 0. And then spells at level 2 are two for uh, two first level spells you get your first second level spell at level three so this is really following the same uh, level progression as uh, a D&D does uh, but um, the maximum again is level 14 a D&D went higher than that especially for human mages magical scholar template and it tells you they have lore mastery collegiate wizardry uh, then all of their starting equipment that they would have. And then here is their attack uh, and saving throw matrix. We get the cleric. Cleric is a wisdom based. No requirements. Um, that means no attribute requirements. No minimum level uh, of attribute. And then uh, D6 maximum 14. And you have the priest template here, uh, which is basically, you know, divine blessing and theology and then the, uh, the weapons and equipment package, the starting pack that they would have, um, you know, for that particular class. We have the thief, dexterity, D4, so old school D4, not a D6, uh, and uh, level 14. Same exact uh, skills that they have, uh, class skills. The uh, template that they put here is for a Tomb Raider. And their level of progression. It shows you their backstab uh, stat going up to as high as, 50, uh, as five, uh, five times the amount at level 13. Now, campaign classes. Now, what gets me is, is that um, it doesn't come out and say what it means by a campaign class. Um, you know, other than these are not the core classes. And so these are the optional classes that you might include in your own campaign. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's what I derive from, you know, this very quick, like, glance through, is that, um, and let me see if they specifically mention campaign classes earlier on, character classes. I didn't see that it included a special note on campaign classes in here. Um, here it has... Four additional human classes, the Assassin, Bard, Blade Dancer, and Explorer, are provided to show how the core classes can be customized for specific archetypes within the campaign setting. All right, so, yeah, it's basically just showing you examples of customization uh, that can be included. Compared to humans, demi-humans are rare and generally more specialized. Demi-human classes are defined by their race, with different classes available for dwarves, elves, and other demi-humans, the demi-human classes described in the rules are the dwarven vault guard, dwarven craft priest, elven spell sword, and elven night blade. So there are very specific classes to race, um, and and so that's how that is. Uh, that is sorted out. So let's get to the campaign classes of Assassin, D6, level 14. Prime requisites are both strength and dexterity. 
Now, usually the case is, is that you cannot exceed a 10% uh, bonus um, in your primes, you know, your combined prime. So if you had a 5% uh, a dexterity, um, a dexterity bonus to XP and a 10% due to strength, you would still only have a total of a 10% uh, bonus to XP. Uh, you would not have a 15 or potentially a 20%. Um, so here we have bards. Blade dancers. Um, so blade dancers, not something that I am familiar with in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, let's see how this uh, compares. So this is a wisdom index. Uh, requirements is none. The hit die is a D6, maximum level 14, so that's uniform across the board. Blade dancers are human women who have dedicated themselves to the service of the goddess of war. They belong to the military clerical order, where they are trained in fighting, casting spells. Within the Auron Empire, most blade dancers are trained to the art from a young age at the temples of Iana, goddess of love and war. A fully trained blade dancer is highly co coveted as a bodyguard and escort by the great noble houses. All right, so very, very focused on uh, lore-based character class and, uh, and very specific. All right, so that's really very interesting. And here you have their spell use. Um, they gain AC bonuses. Uh, with each level, so that's also interesting here, although it takes quite a long time before they get an AC bonus of plus two. That doesn't happen until level seven, and they don't hit plus three until level 13. So they spend a lot of time with the plus one AC bonus. But interesting, very, you know, interesting uh, combination of different classes uh, coming together there. Uh, their proficiencies under a temple blade dancer are swashbuckler and performance dance. Uh, and then it has uh, their starting equipment, so a pair of gracefully carved uh, curved swords, uh, polished leather armor, golden silk cloak, blade dancer's headdress, holy symbol, and uh, backpack and two weeks of uh, rations. So uh, pretty some very unique and then standard equipment that they start off with. An explorer. And explorers are scouts and trackers adept at both woodcraft and archery. Few adventuring parties would dare the wilderness without an experienced explorer to guide them. All right, so pretty cool. Another character class that fits a very particular niche, um, but a useful one. And so that is very, very interesting. Uh, this, I believe, is a uh, an explorer that's being shown here. Uh, they have an accuracy bonus and animal reflexes. And out in outdoors, explorers are difficult to spot, having the ability to seemingly disappear into the woods and underbrush with a proficiency throw of a 3-plus on a d20. And here we have their... Um, they do a damage bonus... And here are their hit die. Their damage bonus goes up to plus five by the level 12. And here is a Pathfinder template. So here are the demi-human classes. So the Dwarven Vault Guard. Um, requisite here, uh, requirement is a constitution of nine. They have uh, D8 HD, um, uh, so, and a 13 maximum. So that's the first one that I've seen that does not have a 14 maximum. So you do have some, uh, some limitation on, uh, on demi-humans here. And uh, first, first one to have a requirement for uh, constitution as well, or any attribute for that matter. And let's see, a goblin slayer, goblin slaying and carving. 
So um, let's see what specifically it does for goblin slaying. They advance in attack throws and saving throws as fighters by two points every three levels. Um, their base attack increases as well. Melee attacks by plus one at first level and by plus one at levels three, six, nine, and twelve. Yeah, so this is their, um, this is what it's talking about here, their, their damage bonus. and so forth so um the goblin slayer template if your dwarf van uh, vault guards intelligence is 13 or greater they may pick one or more additional general proficiencies before play if you'd like all right so um so they have a, a proficiency bonus here is the craft priest which is a wisdom prime requisite constitution of nine uh, HD D6, 10 is the maximum, uh, maximum level. It seems that the, the classes that have, at least of, amongst the demi-humans, the more, uh, extra abilities that the demi-human specialty class has, the more of a cap there is on their level. <clears throat> so it's kind of a balance. The Elf Swar, uh, Spell Sword, is uh, maximum 10 and here you have strength and intelligence primes uh, d6 damage uh, d6 HD I'm sorry and here once again you have that maximum cap of a 12 for level a uh, 10 I'm sorry I keep on miss the, the speaking and uh, and that's because they're a spell user fighter magic user template which is very common And then the Elf Nightblade, which is Dex and Intelligence. This is going to be like the Fighter-Thief combo. You can see they have just a maximum level of an 11 as opposed to a 14, but it's also not a 10. And that is because they are a very, very lightly uh, magical uh, spell ability here. Uh, only going up to level 3 in spells. Elf Nightblades can cast spells. Then we go to selecting alignment. And uh, alignment in the game system is just the, the three alignments. Uh, very old school of Law, Neutrality, and Chaos. Adventure Parties. Uh, the world of Adventure Conqueror King are dangerous and hostile. For the sake of survival, characters team up to undertake adventures. Uh, and any uh, number of types of monsters that could lie in wait. Uh, and such groups are known as adventure parties. Um, they may hire NPCs such as henchmen or mercenaries. And so forth. And then we will get into... I'm going to probably skip over equipment. But... Um, because it's usually generally standardized unless i see something in there that's really stands out um we're just i'm just going to stick to uh character creation which you've you've seen here i will at some point when i'm all done with this i will do i will create a character so that you can see it with the character sheet and all of that and see just creating a character for the system once i've gone through many of the main chapters of the book and uh you know and continue my first really you know in-depth or or you know and this is still really not super super in-depth yet uh but when i get to the point where i'm creating a character then i'll do kind of that wrap up and really talk about uh what the character generation was what the concept of the character is and then leave that as a uh, as a setup to go right into the interview with um, with Alexander Macris, and then um, and then I will certainly push for the uh, the Kickstarter program uh, and uh, you know and check that out. And 
I'm fairly certain there will be something that I will look to uh, to back myself. So when that comes out, I will certainly uh, do a separate video on just the Kickstarter as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment section. If you are far more familiar with uh, Adventure Conquer King than I obviously am, then uh, I welcome your, you know, your comments and, and critiques and, and even suggestions of what I should look for uh, as I'm going in greater detail here on the, uh, the core rulebook. So thanks for joining. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh, actually, it's not the weekend. It is Monday. So for many of us, uh, you know, in the United States, it is Columbus Day. And so for a lot of us, it's an extra day off. So uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen sometime soon or at a convention. My next scheduled convention right now is going to be in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in January. So really looking forward to that. As that date gets closer, I will do another video talking about uh, that event coming up and and my participation in it. It was actually the last video I had done. Uh, so you can always check that out in the, uh, in the catalog of previous videos on this channel. And uh, as always, enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, keep on gaming and I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a table sometime soon. Take care.